Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is my third tutorial, my three-part video tutorial series on setting up Samba 4 as an Active Directory Domain Controller that will be using DNS and DHCP. In the first tutorial, we set up a, an Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit LTS server. And in the second tutorial, we set up DNS and DHCP using Bind 9. In the third tutorial here, we're going to go ahead and set up Samba 4 and we're going to tie it together with the Bind 9 DNS. As in the two previous tutorial videos, I'm going to follow my tutorial that I've set up on my website, thejonas.net, and that is right here. And I did mention in the previous tutorial that um, the host PC I'm using right now, the um, Mint 17.1, is set up on a static IP. I'm going to go ahead and set it to a DHCP so it picks up an IP address off the server here. And this should change to 10.0.2.99, which is the IP address of the server we've been building in the last two tutorials. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and SSH now, SSH now into the server. And I can use the host name now that the DNS is being picked up by the server on my host PC. The name of the server is DCSRV. Accept the key. And log in that up a little bit. I'm going to minimize the server now and work from the uh, terminal here since I'm SSH into the server. Um, I'm, I don't need the sudo command since I'm in as root. On the previous tutorials I did the app get update and the app get disk upgrade. It's not necessary for this. You can run it if you'd like. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install the ACL. And Y for yes. Go ahead with that install. When that's finished, we're going to use Nano, the text editor, to go ahead and edit the edit fstab file. And we're just going to replace the existing entry with this one. And a nano to save it, just control O that commits it, enter actually writes it, and then control X to get out. And we're going to do a mount minus A command. And we'll go ahead and reboot the server. Server is rebooting, as you can see. Server is back up. Let's go ahead and SSH back into the server. Let's clear this up a little bit. We need to install all of these software packages. Let's go ahead and uh, Y for yes, and we'll go ahead and let it uh, download, configure, and install. I want to pause the uh, recording while this is taking place because it's going to take a minute or two. And when the configuration wizard starts up, I will start the video back up. I'll be right back. Okay, the configuration is asking for the default Kerberos version 5 ROM. Kerberos authentication it would be mydc.abc.lan. All in caps. Go ahead and apply that. Uh, host name of Kerberos server. Here it's asking for Kerberos servers for your ROM. And it's going to be the host name here, mydc.abc.lan. And that's all in lowercase. And the last part is administrative server for your Kerberos realm, and it's the same right here. So we already have that copied and go ahead and paste it. This is going to continue on with the uh, installation. I'm going to pause the recording and be right back when it's done. Okay, let's go ahead and remove our Samba SMB.conf, our SMB config. It's going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to we'll end up creating a new one here using the Samba tool during the provisioning process. So we're going to go ahead and provision our Active Directory. First, it wants our ROM, which is, once again, mydc.abc.lan. Of course, you know, adjust yours accordingly. And mydc. And it is a DC, a domain controller. It's asking to use the Samba internal DNS. And nope, we're not going to use that. We're going to use the bind9 underscore DLZ. 
the bind9 DNS. Now it's asking to create a domain administrative password. Uh, I would put some complexity on this, a minimum of eight characters or more, a capital uh, letter and numbers. I have to do it twice to confirm. And now it's going to go ahead and run the provisioning. I did one earlier on a test, uh, and I just copied the results here just to, as an example. Now we got our new Samba configure, SMB config. We're going to go ahead. Well, just a quick recap uh, before I begin this next step. Samba 4 is, is configured and it's running. There's an Active Directory domain controller now running on the server along with a DNS and DHCP. They're running in tandem, but they're not running as they're not running together because they're not configured to work together yet. So that's the next part. We're going to configure Samba to work with Bind. So let's go into the the new created Samba config, and we're just going to go ahead and just do a lot of copying and pasting here in these next uh, few minutes, as we did in the previous ones. In the global section, we're just going to go ahead and paste this in. Uh, DNS forwarders, which is the local host IP address. It will query itself, and then if it needs to go out to the internet, we have the Samba DNS, uh, or I'm sorry, the Bind DNS set up to go to uh, the public DNS server of Google, or if you did like your ISP's public DNS, however you set yours up. So let's go ahead and save this. And if you did the previous tutorial, which I hope you did, um, some of these files will look familiar. This needs to get paste at the bottom of this name config option. We we'll just move this down and paste it right here at the bottom. There's a duplicate entry here since we are changing it slightly. This says no, one says yes, we'll get rid of the no. And what we can do here, I guess, is just clean this up a little bit. There we go. Go ahead and save that. We need to tell Samba which version of bind we're using. Now, since we're using just the default repositories to build the server, we're not using, we're not adding the repositories. I think it makes it easier on patching that way and security updates. Uh, it installed 9.9.0. However, it is configured for 9.8.0, which we don't want. We'll go ahead and comment that out, and then we'll uncomment the 9.9.0. That's all we have to do there. Let's go ahead and save that and get out of the file. Using nano again, we're going to go into the uh, Etsy bind name config here, CONF, and we're going to put this include as the second one. So we're just going to move this down one and just go ahead and paste it in as the second entry and save it. And I find the most common mistakes when setting this up is usually when you copy and paste you forget like a, a comma or a semicolon so if it doesn't run you just have to recheck your config files to make sure you didn't miss something it's usually something simple we're going to go into the app armor and we're just going to go ahead and paste all this in right under the last var here slash var okay and go ahead and save that and we're going to do a reboot. And it's done. We're going to test it out here just to make sure we didn't have any errors. Okay, it's back up. Let's go ahead and SSH back into the server. What I would like to do here is go back to the, uh, on the Jonas.net, go back to the DNS and DHCP. And scroll down to the bottom. And let's restart the bind service just to make sure that it's restarting with no error messages okay and we're good and we'll go ahead and restart the uh, DHCP all right it's running I have a Windows 7 right here let's go ahead and start it up and we're going to we'll test the DNS and DHCP Hopefully, you know it should pick up an IP address and we should be able to ping some of the records that we set up in uh, the previous tutorial, and we'll join them to the domain. And I have the Microsoft Administrative Pack loaded on here. Let's go ahead and log in and test it out here. It 
we'll do a start run CMD and do an IP config abc.land okay let's go ahead and see if we can ping uh, some of the records we had set up in the previous tutorial uh, router 01 was an A record we set up very good uh, we'll ping my DC the domain name okay and let's just make sure we're getting out to the internet and go ahead and ping Yahoo okay DNS and DHCP is working now let's just go ahead and join it to the domain uh, computer properties advanced system settings name change and it's uh, my DC go ahead and put in your administrative password domain administrative password when we created during the provisioning process give it a second here to join okay and we'll go ahead and restart the uh, computer and we'll go ahead and log in with the uh, domain administrator. In Windows 7, if you just type in the word administrator, um, it will resolve to the local host name, so we have to put the domain name in first. DC and it should create a profile for me there we go and we'll check the Microsoft administrative uh, tools the admin pack and we'll create a user and make sure everything is uh, working normally we can check the DNS and uh, group policies too you can manage your entire domain from this Microsoft admin pack and it's you can download it from Microsoft uh, it's, well, there we go let's go ahead and um, advanced features I'm going to create a user here uh, one for myself this is a great tool uh, Donald and I'll call myself D Jonas Create a domain user, go ahead and set up my password. And I'll leave it to where our user must change password at next login. And I'll go ahead and make myself a domain admin. Here should prompt me to change my password. Now I don't have to put the domain in because the domain's right here. Uh, Jonas. Password has expired, must be changed. Okay, very good. Go ahead and create a new password. Changing password, password has been changed. Excellent. Now I should create a desktop for me. DNS and DHCP and Samba 4 are working pretty well together here. And there are users and computers. It's working well. Let's go ahead and look at Group Policy Manager. Alright, very good. Uh, we can take a quick look at the DNS. Our server name is uh, DC SRV. Uh, forwarders. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so the server set up DNS DHCP. DNS is working with the uh, Samba 4 uh, Active Directory. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching my tutorial videos and have a nice day. And thank you for visiting the Jonas.net.